Welcome to the last lecture on measures of dispersion. Our learning outcome is to calculate and interpret variance and standard deviation. Another measure of dispersion, also known as a measure of spread, is to consider the deviation between the data values x and the mean x bar. For each piece of data, this is given by x minus x bar. However, we need to consider all of the data values and the fact that x minus x bar could be positive or it could be negative. To avoid negatives, first we square the deviations x minus x bar all squared. Then, to consider all of the data values, we take the mean average of all of the deviations. The resulting value is called the variance, and the variance equals the sum of x minus x bar all squared, all divided by n. We can rewrite this formula as variance equals the sum of x squared divided by n minus the sum of x divided by n all squared. This formula is far easier to use and can be thought of as the mean of the squares minus the square of the means. Since we have squared our deviations, the variance is said to be measured in units squared. So to return to a measure in units, we can take the square root of the variance, which is called a standard deviation. So standard deviation equals the square root of the variance. Now our symbols we use is the Greek letter sigma, lowercase. And this is used for the standard deviation of a population. So sigma equals a standard deviation, which means sigma squared equals the variance. Let's look at an example. This is an example of discrete data. The test marks of seven students are 3, 4, 6, 2, 8, 8, 5. Find the variance and the standard deviation. We'll use the friendly version of the variance formula. And here it is. And you may notice that the second term, the sum of x divided by n all squared, is actually x bar squared. It's the mean of the data squared. So we need to find x squared, the sum of x squared, and the sum of x to use this formula. And it's easiest to do this in a table. So our top row, we have our data values, we'll call them x, 3, 4, 6, 2, 8, 8, 5. And in the second row, we've just got x squared. We have simply squared all of the values of x. And the last column, you will see we have the sum of x equals 36, and the sum of x squared equals 218. So we're now ready to use our formula. And all we do is substitute our numbers into our formula. The sum of x squared, 218, n is 7, we have 7 numbers, the sum of x is 36, and if we put that in the calculator, we'll find it's 230 divided by 49, and as a decimal to two decimal places, that's 4.69. So that's the variance. We also need the standard deviation. And remember, standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So if we take the square root of 230 divided by 49, we get the square root of 230 over 7, which as a decimal is 2.17 to two decimal places. So that's variance and standard deviation for discrete data. Let's have a look at variance for a frequency table. Now, when we calculated the mean of data, we modified the formula for frequencies. And just as we modified the formula for the mean with frequencies, we will do the same for the variance and standard deviation. So let f be the frequency and n is the sum of the frequencies. Then our formula becomes variance equals the sum 
of f times x minus x bar all squared divided by the sum of f, or the friendly version, the sum of f times x squared divided by the sum of f, minus the sum of f times x divided by the sum of f all squared. Let's look at an example. Catherine records the time spent out of school during the lunch hour to the nearest minute of students in her year. The results are, and we have a frequency table. The time x is in the left column and the number of students in the right column. So we're saying that three students spent 35 minutes outside of school and so on. Calculate the standard deviation for the time spent out of school. We'll use the friendly version of the formula. So you can see that we're going to need to find f times x, f times x squared, the sum of f times x, the sum of f times x squared, and of course the sum of f. So let's add some columns to our table. So, this is the original data that we started with. And you can see that we have added a column for f times x, column for x squared, and a column for f times x squared. And at the, the bottom row is now a totals row. So we have the total of the frequencies, the total of f times x, and the total of f times x squared. So we're now ready to use our formula, and again, we simply substitute our numbers into our formula, and we get a decimal value. But we want the standard deviation, so we need to take the square root of that decimal value. And you can see that to two decimal places, our standard deviation is 1.09. Let's now look at variance for a grouped frequency distribution. Now remember, a grouped frequency distribution means that we do not have the actual data values. We don't know the actual values of x. So that means that we will assume that every value in a class takes the value of the midpoint of the class. And as we've talked about before, this means that the variance will only be an estimate, just like our median was only an estimate and our mean was only an estimate. So let's look at an example. Andy recorded the length in minutes of each telephone call he made for a month. Here is a summary of the data. So we can see that on four occasions, his telephone call was between 0 and 5 minutes. On 15 occasions, the telephone call was between 5 and 10 minutes, and so on. Calculate an estimate for the standard deviation of the length of telephone calls. Since this is group data, we need the class midpoints to use as the data values. And as before, we also need to find f times x, f times x squared, the sum of f times x squared, the sum of f, and the sum of f times x. So let's complete the table. And here it is. The midpoint is the value we will use. So f times x is the frequency f times the midpoint x. So 4 times 2.5 is 10. Of course, x squared will be 2.5 squared, and 2.5 squared is 6.25, so f times x squared is 4 times 6.25, which is 25. And we repeat that for each row. And then at the bottom row, we're going to find our totals. So the sum of f is 27, the sum of f times x is 285, and the sum of f times x squared is 6,487.5. So we now have the information we need and we're just going to substitute it into our formula. Here's a reminder of the values we have just found and substituting 
into our formula here, then we get 128.85802. But we need standard deviation, which is the square root of variance. So finding the square root, our final answer, standard deviation, is 11.35. So in summary, for discrete data, the variance is the sum of x minus x bar all squared divided by n, which is also equal to the sum of x squared divided by n minus the sum of x divided by n all squared. In other words, the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. But for frequency tables, we have the sum of f times x minus x bar all squared divided by the sum of f, or the friendly version, the sum of f times x squared divided by the sum of f, minus the sum of f times x divided by the sum of f all squared. And remember, for grouped data, use the frequency formula, but x is now the class midpoint. Now have a go at the question. <laughs> 